Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again, and it's early in the morning, and I, I thought I'd take this opportunity to talk a little bit about the engines that I built this winter. The uh, uh, cold winter is about over here in Illinois, and uh, I'll be getting out into the uh, garage and playing with my tractor. So if you're not interested in my little steam engines, you can turn this off. Uh, but uh, I built a bunch of them this winter, and uh, let's take a look at them. But also, I recently went to an auction and I bought, I like these little toy steam engines made for boys, but now men collect them because boys don't care about such things. They only care about the Xbox and uh, things like that. But uh, uh, I, I still like these. And uh, this is one that I made that is a, a wobbler. And I've made a lot of wobblers. And this is a, this is a double acting. Most of them that I made were single acting, but double acting means that the piston is uh, is forced by pressure in both directions. The double acting will always have a bottom on it, like this. Also, the flywheels, most of the flywheels I'm going to show are the lead spoked ones, but I made up a bunch of these uh, steel ones with a whole circle and there's a whole series of videos that will be out on, on uh, four or five different methods of making a bolt circle so I'll uh, watch that that's all milling machine Bridgeport milling machine work but there's a little uh, double acting uh, uh, steam engine wobbler oscillating engine and this is made of bar stock strictly bar stock and several pieces and that's really what I want to talk about here is, is how many pieces there are to these engines. Now this is a little engine. It is not uh, oscillating. It uses a spool valve right here in this chamber. This one is single acting. About a 5 8 bore and it's a 3 quarter stroke. Now on this one, uh, I've really got three pieces. We got a base, we got an upright here that's been milled from bar stock, and then the uh, cylinder and the valve is really all one piece and inserted into the upright. Still a lot of pieces, and the idea was I wanted to get away from uh, so many pieces. And that will lead me up to the next one or two engines. Again, this is not a wobbler. Most large uh, locomotive steam engines use a spool valve, but they would have been double acting, of course. Here's another little engine, also with a spool valve, and it's, it's not oscillating. And by the way, these uh, Engines with a, a spool valve use an eccentric rather than uh, the cylinder being the valve. And this one is pretty much all one piece made out of bar stock like this from the scrapyard. One inch by two inch thick aluminum. Now this engine is all one piece milled out of that stock that I just showed you and sometimes I make a wooden model, a mock-up, even before I use paper. Matter of fact this one I never did on paper but uh, and this was number two so I, I made several of these with modifications. You know if you take the time to do this and you can make this whole thing, this is made out of a 2 by 4 you could make that whole thing and uh, less than five minutes on the delta band saw and then it just gives you an idea for the the feel of it and I usually lay the the flywheel alongside of it uh, like like this sometimes I even drill a hole in here you know and I put the flywheel in place to see how things are gonna fit so that's how I build engines but if you look at this you'll see that this is all one piece here that the base of course is separate and that could be wood or anything else you want, marble. But this is all one piece. 
including the valve body here. And I put uh, four screws in here on my bolt circle. I like the looks of it better, but it certainly would work with one. And there are many possibilities here on, and variations. I've got a little bit of a well here for the, the flywheel milled into the base which uh, wouldn't be totally necessary. I could make this longer but I happen to like the looks of that. And on some of these I made several of them. Uh, one I gave away to, to a friend who likes my little engines. Most of my friends when I show them they'll say oh that's nice. Uh, how are the Cubs doing uh, this season? You know so this is sure a niche that very few people are interested in. And here's one I finished just yesterday and it's a horizontal. I think I got to get back to horizontal and again I want to make one piece so in developing this one I did actually make a few drawings. Uh, I know I, I talk about not making drawings but these aren't necessarily in the right order here but I had uh, three or four different drawings made on a drafting board with a T-square and all of that just so I can see how things are going to fit uh, together. And that really is a good method. It's just that I don't particularly like it. But once I get started on it, uh, there's uh, actually some enjoyment in that. Uh, I forgot how much fun it can be. And uh, I don't know why I use all different kinds of paper. This is cardboard. But I don't know if you can faintly see uh, the flywheel in position. So once I came up with that design, then I made... Again, the wooden model takes, uh, that's probably 10 minutes because it's several pieces glued together. I even had a hole here for the flywheel. Where'd that flywheel go? Oh, here, that I was able to put that in there and I can see that's not going to quite fit so I had to make it a little bit higher and so on. And then after all that work, I actually made a foundry pattern. Now this is the, the pattern that I use to make a casting. And it is several pieces because I wanted a flat back. Well actually it's a split pattern. So you can see here that this is a separate piece. And you know what, these really take a, a lot of time to make. So much more than even what you might think. But that piece is separate. This one is separate. If there was some interest, I might show a uh, make a video showing casting this and then uh, machining it. But there was an awful lot of steps. So when I mold this, it'll set flat like that in the flask, like that. Then I mold that half, flip it over and reassemble it with those pieces that are shown here. Now I like a fillet. These are called fillets. Those are leather. If you don't have a fillet you tend to get some tearing of the metal and stresses. So this is something I've never done before but I put the fillet, the leather fillet glued onto this piece. See all the angles? That's what takes so long because you got that pattern draft. and then the valve part would go on there but I didn't have any uh, I don't paint these up or, or go to too much effort because I'm probably only going to make one of them or one or two and that's it so you hate to, to spend too much time on the pattern but they have to be made pretty accurately anyway now if I had this to do over and I might modify this to me this looks a little thick and clotty I'd like to refine that so that it is a little more sleek and and uh, pleasant on the eye. Then I made castings and on this casting here on the finished one you can see that I got a shrink hole right here. Now uh, thick cross sections are always troublesome. Also a little bit of shrinkage down in here and I really need fillets in there because you can see that 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 can be problematic without fillets.
I ran the uh, the sprue and the gate into the bottom so I wouldn't have any uh, defects out here in the casting but really the uh, the gate and the riser needs to be off the thickest spot so on another one that I made and hasn't been machined yet I've got the uh, sprue right here that's where the metal enters the mold this is the gate that's all cut off thrown away recycled but often I get some pitting here where, where this comes in but the way this is gated notice that it has eliminated all of that shrinkage that you saw on the other one you see you don't have that sinkhole right here because the shrinkage takes place up here and this all stays liquid and feeds this while it's solidifying if you understand anything about uh, casting and metal as it is solidifying from the liquid state and there's always shrinkage to be dealt with these little engines always run real well they're, they're pretty much bulletproof if you don't have any binding they will not tolerate any tight spots or binding this is running on about 5 psi single acting this could be made into a double acting it's always more complicated and finicky a little harder to build and I may do that in a future episode several people have said why are you always spinning it to start why won't it start by itself well even a double acting engine isn't going to start by itself if it's at dead center like right here or right here so in order for a steam engine to be self-starting it has to usually be multiple cylinder and then the two cylinders uh, not exactly uh, 180 degrees apart in other words you have to be in a position like this on your power stroke for it to get started now you say well a big locomotive uh, they can't spin those over well those have uh, two cylinders one on each side and they would be uh, uh, positioned such that they would never be a dead center however if you go to steam fair sometimes you will see these guys on the big case uh, traction engines uh, fiddling with the reversing lever trying to get it started and sometimes they have a little trouble getting her going even though they're running about 150 pounds of pressure so the engineer required a little skill to 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 uh, to get that over center now if you build a, a two-cylinder double acting and uh, get the the crankshaft like I just said so they they will always be self-starting but otherwise not but then again when you think about it gas engines are never self-starting they always need to be cranked you know I'm like you I don't like television I don't watch it much it's a vast wasteland and even the channels I, I like like the discovery and that have been pretty much ruined by sound effects and whooshing and horrible things and you know do you guys dislike that let's say uh, the logging uh, I know I'm uh, ranting here a little bit the logging shows why is it that, that you get they get you all interested in these guys doing some logging and then they say meanwhile 700 miles to the north and then they go on another story and then they, they you know they keep coming back but I find that so annoying, I just thought, I'm not watching that anymore, you know, cause, because they're jerking me around. I don't like to be jerked around. Now, I bought two of these steam vessels that are identical. They're shown in one of the other videos, too. It has a half-inch uh, pipe thread there, 12 inches long, 2 inches in diameter, 3 chimed. You know what, what 3 chime means? 1, 2, 3. If there's only one chime, that is one note, uh, they shriek. So this is pretty neat. I don't know what that company is, but I already mounted the other one in the garage with an air hose on it for my grandsons to toot on. They think that's pretty neat, although it sure is loud inside of the garage with 100 pounds of pressure. I talked about this in one other episode. Be sure and tell your shut-in friends or relatives who are in nursing homes or wheelchairs or confined to their lazy boy chair 
how to watch videos such as mine and the hundreds of others that are on YouTube uh, about mechanical things, engines, uh, lathes, machining, and all of that. And some of these men are older men and are unaware of uh, that this is available on their smart TV, you know, by watching YouTube or uh, by, by getting videos, and I do offer some videos myself, but uh, some of these older men uh, would, would give anything to watch something like this rather than the Cartoon Network and heaven knows the endless news shows where they're speculating uh, where the Malaysian airline uh, plane went even though they know no more about it than you and I but they are experts because they're sitting behind a desk and are wearing short skirts Thanks for watching and be sure and look at my many other videos. And this is my winter's work plus several more of course. But it takes a lot longer to make the first one. Uh, if you got plans, you know, you can really crank through them. But that's what I've been doing all winter besides making videos which take really an incredible amount of time. I think some of you from the comments that I get appreciate how much time goes into some of this stuff. Now there's a couple other uh, channels you should watch. Keith Fenner and A-Bomb. Now A-Bomb is down in, uh, I believe in Florida and uh, he's got a machine shop and he's got some pretty good videos. I think you'll like that. Keith Fenner, of course, being the master machinist. And I'm sure all of you are familiar with those other channels. Let me know if you like these little things or I may stop uh, doing this because it seems to be a minimal interest. This is Tubal Kane saying, so long for now.